So this is Mistra, uh, which was the capital of the Byzantine uh, despots of the Maria. The last, uh, uh, the last emperor of Byzantine, uh, Byzantium, um, Constantine Paleologus, was uh, crowned here, and he was the despot here before he went to Constantinople, where eventually. And he was to die in the siege of 1453. But this area was uh, the centre of a renaissance for the Byzantines in the late uh, 14th and the 15th century, uh, as well as the many churches here. There were philosophers like George Gamistus Plethon, uh, who developed Neoplatonism um, and in some ways paved the way for the renaissance. It's a charming place, um, quite haunting, and uh, especially nice at this time of day. Mistra sits on the side of the Tegetos Mountains. It has three levels, the castle, the upper town, and the lower town. Below it sits the Great Vale of Sparta, seat of the classical kingdom. The castle was built by Frankish conquerors in the 13th century when they seized the area from the Byzantine Empire, which was the continuation of the Roman Empire. In 1262, the castle was surrendered back to the Byzantines, who then founded the city of Mistra on the slope below it. Under the Byzantines, Mistra grew to over 20,000 inhabitants, including many philosophers, monks, bishops, nobles, merchants and other prosperous people. The Maria, as the area was called, was ruled by the despots appointed by the emperor. Usually they were close relatives, brothers or sons of the emperor themselves. back towards the upper gate which is through these steps and to the right. It's below the Crusader castle up at the top, built by the Franks. Up at the back are the Tegetas mountains and below is the plain of Sparta. To the right is the palace church.
the Belouz Palace of the Despots, which has been renovated over many years. And some of the other monasteries and nobles' houses of Mistra. Two great families vied with each other for control of the despotate, the Cantacuzines and the Paleologoi. The Paleologoi were the emperors in the imperial city of Constantinople, and ultimately it was they who gained the upper hand, although the two families were to some extent reconciled in the final years of the empire, and John Cantacuzine was a close ally of Constantine Paleologos, the last emperor. Oh, this looks cool. <laughs> ah. I'm not sure what it is, but it's cool. <laughs> you need the car down here. Yeah. <laughs> That's true, yeah. This is the monastery of the Pantanessa, which is just to the side of the Despot's Palace. Still has quite a lot of the original icons and paintings on the wall. is the lower town, main gate. This path takes you back up to the upper town and to the Despot's Palace on the right and the Pantanasa Monastery. And of course up at the top the castle. This is the metropolis.
Constantine Palaiologos, who was to be the last emperor, was crowned under the dome here in the Metropolitan Cathedral on the 6th of January 1449. Constantine had ruled as the despot of part of Maria alongside his brothers Thomas and Demetrius uh, for some years previously, and he had been instrumental in a revival of power throughout the Peloponnese for the Byzantines and had even invaded lands beyond there in Athens and Thebes and up into the Ottoman lands before being turned back. He became the emperor and in late January 1449 he went to Constantinople never to return. In 1460 his brother Demetrius, who was the continuing despot of Mistra, finally surrendered the city to the Turks and over the coming centuries it faded away into insignificance and decay. The words of the new Turkish Sultan Mehmet on the fall of Constantinople seem apt as well for Mistra when he quoted a 7th century Arab poet and said, The spider weaves the curtains in the palace of Caesar and the owl sounds the watch. Mm -hmm.